Hello, this is the <coughs> sorry, Trade Site US Stocks, Futures, and Forex Market Preview for the week beginning Sunday the 10th of July, ending Friday the 15th. Can you believe it? This is options expiration for July already. That is the third Friday in July, only halfway through the month. So it's going to be one of those weeks where we'll have some options unravel on Wednesday. It's not a quarterly expiration, so it's probably not going to be as big of a deal. We are in what is typically the slowest part of the year, right? Summer doldrums, as they call them, uh, kind of lasts until second week in August or so. Uh, then people start to go back to school, depending on where you're at uh, in the country. Uh, I know here in Phoenix, our kids go back July 20th, but I think we're a little abnormal compared to everybody else there. So... You know, I, not a lot of expectations. We've been pulling off some stuff here, um, and I was obviously gone for a week, but, uh, you know, until we get out of the summer doldrums and start to see some real movement, it, it is shocking with everything going on in the world. You would think there'd be a little more action uh, in the markets, but there just has not been. Um, so here's a look at the dollar index. This is the daily chart of the dollar. Uh, new highs, obviously, dollar continues to get stronger as our interest rate situation appears to be heading up. Um, so there's nothing we can, uh, well, yeah, strong dollar has, has good things, good benefits in a lot of ways. Obviously, some people believe in a weak dollar, um, but our policies right now are definitely putting us out ahead of the rest of the world and money's coming here. And that's really what that means. Um, so that's, that's uh, fairly good news. It gives us better buying power abroad. Uh, let's look at the major pairs. Euro dollar, obviously the inverse of the dollar index typically to new lows, pound dollar, also swept new lows this week, although not much action there. Aussie dollar, remember this was a four day week because of the 4th of July last Monday. Aussie dollar, just also very dead for the whole week. Uh, Euro yen slipped a bit, pound yen, um, not much there, closed about where it opened. And the New Zealand dollar pair, uh, <coughs> you know, nothing there either. So if you look at the, like here's the New Zealand, for example, um, only about 100 pips of range for the whole week, but really, if you look at <clears throat> Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it's stuck in about a 60 pip range or so. That's not great. Let's look at the pound dollar, which is the one we trade the most, obviously. High to low for the week here is 250 pips, but basically what it was is Monday was a holiday, so you can write that off, and then Tuesday when we came back, that was the big drop. That's your action, and then outside of that, it was pretty narrow, 150 pips for the last three days of the week. So uh, let's see if we can... Get something better out of that. Here's the ES front month futures contract. This is the daily chart of the broad market in futures form. And as you can see, we had a 13 buy signal back in May. It was 13 buy signal back in May and then bounced a bit and then came back down. And we tested the risk line of that 13 buy signal exactly. Never broke underneath it for a close and then uh, curled back up again. So, so far, even though we're right where we were when we got the 13 buy signal, that is technically still in place. We have not completed that in any way, shape, or form. The S&P cash index was down 3.24 on Friday. It was pretty much a dead day. NASDAQ 100 up 16. That's a, that's a blip anymore for the NASDAQ, obviously. The SOX was up 12. Also not much there. Very near lows. Uh, the biotechs up 20. Right? Russell 2000 uh, down, point two, down 23 cents. Not even a point. I mean, how dead was that day? Crude oil back up above 100, actually to 104.8 after dipping under 100 earlier in the week. Gold up a dollar 20. Right? Uh, there's a 13 buy signal there on gold now, but gold's at lows. This is what's so interesting, right? Gold usually goes up in an inflationary environment. Um, it, it was obviously higher back in February, but then look at it now, just completely uh, rolls over. While we're looking at that type of stuff, let's take a quick look at Bitcoin, back up to 20, almost 22,000. So uh, remember, it got down in the 18,000s there for a bit. Uh, all right, the advanced decline ratio on the NASDAQ on Friday was positive 479. Some more stocks were up than down on the New York negative 172. Some more stocks are down than up, but just barely. NASDAQ volume was only 4.5 billion shares on Friday. Look at that volume just drop off. That's your summer doldrums and that can't work, right? Um, just complete drop off in volume. Um, by the way, the 10 day moving average of volume right now is 5.5 billion. So if you look back at the last 10 days, that's what it was. If you look back a year ago, uh, 4th of July, it was actually more like 4.8. So volume, even though it did dip and fell off at the end of the year last year, and it was pretty low to start the year, has kind of made its way back up a bit, even though we're not going anywhere. It's a really interesting story, to be honest. VIX up, I'm sorry, down $1.44. The trend closes at 1.52. Puts the 10 day at 1.3, so there's no signal there. Apple 
up just 69 cents. Amazon now only $100 stock down 79 cents. Remember the 20 for 1 stock split there. Meta down $1.31. Hanging near lows. Google up $11.41. This thing's getting a little bit stronger off the bottom. Note that buy signal right on time. Look at that. Uh, five days ago and then boom, up four days in a row since then. Goldman Sachs down $2.13, also near the lows. Netflix down $2.30, also near the lows. Peloton down $0.44. Cents. Trying to hold that $10 level. TLT, the 20 year bond ETF, down $1.26. So uh, bonds down rates up. We kind of had rallied a bit. And now we're coming back off again. Note how the high there was that green static trend line. Tesla back up $18.66, but still hanging near lows. Zoom Clues is down $0.94. Cents. And uh, the VXX was at $21.99. Uh, let's look at the intraday action. We'll look at the whole week. So remember, you can see the the prior Friday's close is way off to the left. Then you had a holiday Monday. So that's why you get that weird looking day with no volume. They kind of just open the futures market um, for computer trading for a little bit, but there's no actual trading there. Uh, so then Tuesday we gap down, came back up and filled the gap to Friday's close. Wednesday a flat opening and then late in the day kind of pushed up um, for a small gain. Thursday a small gap up, closed higher. And then Friday, a small gap down filled, wiggled both ways and closed even for the day. Up for the week on the uh, ES and the same thing. Looks pretty similar on the NASDAQ, right? It was a gain for the week. All right. Um, so in terms of economic data coming out this week and what we should focus on, again, I, I want to point out that we have options expiration on Friday. So we could have um, options and rally on Wednesday, maybe. Uh, in terms of U.S. data, I try to focus on that more than anything anymore unless I see something big here. Nothing on Monday at all. Um, Tuesday, economic optimism number, not a big deal. There's a rate announcement out of New Zealand Tuesday night going into Wednesday. Um, the goods trade balance numbers out of the U.K. and all of their production numbers uh, Wednesday or in the wee hours of the morning here. Let's see, nothing out of Canada that matters. Oh, they do have a rate announcement out of Canada. So make it Canada, 10 a.m. on Wednesday. Crude oil inventory is at 10.30 here in the U.S. We're really late on uh, news this week. 30-year bond auction at 1, beige book at 2, federal budget balance at 2. None of those are big deals. Um, all the way into Thursday, the PPI number, the weekly initial and continuing jobless claims number, the weekly natty gas number. China's got GDP, retail sales, fixed asset investment, unemployment rate. Um, and then on Friday, a little bit more, but still none of the big stuff at all this week. Core retail sales, uh, Empire State Manufacturing Index, import export prices, capacity utilization, industrial production, preliminary University of Michigan sentiment, and business inventories. What I will say, though, is uh, we're, we're going to be shortly, not this week, probably with the week after, entering core earnings season. So let's be prepared for that. Um, it's going to be a little bit a different time of year as it usually is. And that's it. Charts as usual brought to you by eSignal. If you've not yet taken a trial of our services, feel free to do so. We will help you out for a couple of weeks. Have a great trading week.